So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hi there, this is Robin Norgren and I'm your host for Montessori, Creativity and the Meaning of Life. You can find the work that I do over on Instagram under Robin underscore Norgren or on my website at www.josiesartschool.com. I'd like to start with some words from the crossroads of should and must from L. Luna. It was a Tuesday around 7 a.m. when I clicked publish on an essay on medium.com titled the crossroads of should and must. We share things online every day, all the time. But something about this thing was different, so different, that in a few short weeks it was tweeted to over 5 million people and read by over a quarter of a million readers. Drop everything you're doing and re- read this right now, one woman posted. This article changed my life, wrote another. I was about to send it to all my employees, wrote one CEO, but I assumed that a third of them would quit if they read it. But you know what? If they don't want to be here, I want them to quit. So I sent it. The emails poured in. The tweets lit up my phone. The article spread through the web in a flash and then flashed some more. It continued to shine and grow and, well, Here we are. I decided to write this book because of the people who shared their stories with me and the pain and the courage I felt in their struggle. Women in their 30s, men in their 20s, a high school senior, fathers, a widow, single moms, millionaires who were poor, poor people who were millionaires, teachers, lawyers, a musician disguised as a lawyer, a poet who loved to drive a city bus, women who didn't want kids, fathers who wanted to raise kids, people who felt stuck in their jobs, and people who were so desperately grateful to have a job at all. The pain cut across gender, location, and age. And at its essence, the pain was this. All too often, we feel that we are not living the fullness of our lives, because we are not expressing the fullness of our gifts. I heard from people who seemed willing to do anything to make their dissatisfaction go away, but they didn't know what to do. I wrote this book to share that I have found what I have found most helpful in navigating my own journey, as well as what has been helpful for the people I met. However, you're not holding a book of answers, because only you know You're holding a collection of the most effective questions I encountered along the way. Think of these pages as a series of doorways designed so that you can choose which way your journey will go. These pages are a pep talk to honor that voice inside of you that says, you have something special to give. It's a reminder that while there is no map for where you're going. Many have traveled this road before. It's permission to unlearn everything you've ever been told you should do in order to learn what you must. It is 11.55 a.m. on a Thursday, and I'm clicking save on this document one final time before it begins its adventure into the world. In my own life, I've found that things appear at the ideal time, not before and not after. 
consider the possibility that this book made its way into your hands because you wanted it to. Because a part of you has seen a crossroads in your life and you're ready for the journey ahead. I am humbled and grateful that these words will find their way from me to you. Somewhere, somehow, at just the right time. I was sound asleep when the sign arrived. It came in the form of a dream, a white room with concrete floors, tall walls, warehouse windows, and a mattress on the floor. That was it. That was my dream. Simple, easily forgotten, yet recurring, nightly, for months. One day, a friend asked the question that turned my life inside out. She said, have you ever tried to look for your dream in real life? Her question felt like a drawbridge being lowered, an invitation to step into a world that felt equal parts fascinating and ridiculous. I first refused to consider it, but her question lingered, and eventually I began to wonder. When you decide to look for your dreams in real life, where do you go? I went to Craigslist. This is from a book called The Creative Habit by Twyla Tharp. I walk into a large white room. It's a dance studio in midtown Manhattan. I'm wearing a sweatshirt, faded jeans, and Nike cross trainers. The room is lined with eight-foot-high mirrors. There's a boom box in the corner. The floor is clean, virtually spotless if you don't count the thousands of skid marks and footprints left there by dancers rehearsing. Other than the mirrors, the boom box, the skid marks, and me, the room is empty. In five weeks, I'm flying to Los Angeles with a troupe of six dancers to perform a dance program for eight consecutive evenings in front of 12,000 people every night. It's my troupe. I'm the choreographer. I have half of the program in half in hand, a 50-minute ballet for all six dancers set to Beethoven's 29th Piano Sonata. I created the piece more than a year ago on many of these same dancers, and I've spent the last few weeks rehearsing it with the company. The other half of the program is a mystery. I don't know what music I'll be using. I don't know which dancers I'll be working with. I have no idea what the costumes will look like or the lighting or who will be performing the music. I have no idea of the length of the piece although it has to be long enough to fill the second half of a full program to give the paying audience its money's worth. The length of the piece will dictate how much rehearsal time I need. This, in turn, means getting on the phone to dancers, scheduling studio time, and getting the ball rolling, all on the premise that something wonderful will come out of what I fashion in the next few weeks in this empty white room. My dancers expect me to deliver because my choreography represents their livelihood. The presenters in Los Angeles expect the same because they've sold a lot of tickets to people with the promise that they'll see something new and interesting from me. The theater owner, without really thinking about it, expects it as well. If I don't show up, his theater will be empty for a week. That's a lot of people, many of whom I've never met, counting on me to be creative. But right now I'm not thinking about any of this. I'm in a room with an obligation to create a major dance piece. The dancers will be here in a few minutes. What are we going to do? To some people, the empty room symbolizes something profound, mysterious, and terrifying. The task of starting with nothing and working your way toward creating something whole and beautiful and satisfying. It's no different for a writer rolling a fresh sheet of paper into his typewriter. 
or more likely firing up the blank screen on his computer, or a painter confronting a virginal canvas, a sculptor staring at a raw chunk of stone, a a composer at the piano with his fingers hovering just above the keys. Some people find this moment, the moment before creativity begins, so painful that they simply cannot deal with it. They get up and walk away from the computer, the canvas, the keyboard. They take a nap or go shopping or fix lunch or do chores around the house. They procrastinate. In its most extreme form, this terror totally paralyzes people. Backyard by Mary Oliver. I had no time to haul out all the dead stuff, so it hung limp or dry wherever the wind swung it, over or down or across. All summer it stayed that way, untrimmed and thickened. The paths grew damp and uncomfortable and mossy until nobody could get through but a mouse or a shadow. Blackberries, ferns, leaves, litter, totally without direction management supervision. The birds loved it. <laughs> 